In response to the societal conditions of the early decades of the 21st century, the youth of the modern era have embraced pet ownership over more traditional lifestyle blocks. In particular, cat ownership has spiked by at least 3,500% in the last 20 years. With this rapid uptake in feline adoption, a new glossary of terms has emerged, a kind of language specific to pet ownership. And with each different animal comes its own separate dialect. To understand this convoluted wordplay, we must dive deep into the dictionary of today and try to take a look at the youth culture within our modern society. Let us start with some of the easier words. The first word we're going to learn is junk. The word junk comes from the junk chart a chart used by cat aficionados to characterize their feline's body types into one of a number of distinctions. Chonk naturally comes from the English word junk and is often spelt with an umlaut over the letter O. In fact, this is one of the defining features of contemporary cat communication, the umlaut. Derived from more Germanic languages, the umlaut in today's lingo is used to emphasize vowels within words. For example, chunk becomes chonk, and with the umlaut it becomes chonk. Another defining feature of this dialect is the open embrace of onomatopoeia. Take the word mlem. If you had encountered this word in the wild, you might be completely and utterly bewildered. Fear not, good fellow. This off-the-cob word isn't the byproduct of your brain melting in the ever-heating climate. It is an onomatopoeic word representing the sound a cat's tongue makes. On the simpler side of words is the word nipnops, which other than sounding very funny, actually serves a practical use. To avoid detection by the Facebook algorithm, these cat lovers have devised words like nipnops so as not to set off Big Brother, who would utterly die if the word nipple was spoken aloud. Next on the list of words is toe beans. Toe beans are the soft pads on the bottom of your cat's foot. There's not much else more to it than that. Another common distinction in cat lingo is the additional O suffix. Borrowed from Australian English, the O suffix can be found in Australia in shorthand like smoko, rubbo, and servo. In cat lingo, the O suffix can be found in words like doggo and keto. This combined with the umlaut is perfectly demonstrative of cat lingo's global adoption and influence. Lastly, today we'll be looking at another feature of cat lingo that I find the most intriguing, letter replacement. Take the word him in English. In cat lingo, some might spell it H-I-M-B. This silent B comes from the English word lamb, and the word him should be pronounced accordingly. Another example in cat lingo is the word chimken, which is obviously derived from the word chicken, but with extra steps. That is indeed the end of today's deep dive into the youth dictionary of today. Now you'll indeed know if what you're overhearing when you're at the mall is sinister or innocent. For TCIP News, I'm Charles Mosley.